Hi, Amos here, and today I've got something a little bit different. It's a vintage Marantz Project D1 deck. This deck I borrowed from a friend who has owned it for a number of years, and you know I wanted to give it a go, see how something like the Yggdrasil Analog 2 compares to something like one of these old vintage decks. Well, what's the big deal about these old decks? Well, this one in particular was made in limited numbers in 1998, so 20, more, just over 20 years ago now. And it's famous because it uses a particular DAC chip. And you're ready for this. I've got it's such a mouthful I have to have read it down. It's the Philips TDA 1541A S2 Double Crown Converter. Now the Double Crown was the top of the line. They made a whole lot of these chips, the TDA, TDA 1541, and they graded them depending on their accuracy. And the top ones got stamped with a double crown mark. And they were put into their best converters. So they made a number of CD players, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, the Project D1, which used their very best converters. Now these were ladder DACs, the old R2R DACs. So actually this is only a 16-bit, and I think it was only capable of 192K input into the actual DAC chip itself. But those old resistor ladder DACs are revered for their very euphoric and, and very enjoyable sound. So in this case, it has a, a number of interesting features which make it a little bit unique compared to today's modern decks and some things which you might consider missing. So for a start, it's missing USB. And of course, USB wasn't a big deal in those old days. People would have, usually back at that time, they would have just a CD player which had a high quality DAC built in or the CD player would be a transport with a high quality transport, and they'd build these separate transports and DACs. This was a trend, I believe, possibly started by Mike Moffat, who of course made the Shit Audio Yggdrasil. So with that, this would often be used with a matching Marantz transport. Of course, computer audio wasn't a big deal in these days. In this case, because we, computer audio is a big deal in these days, I've used a SoundAware D300 reference as my transport for both the Yggdrasil and the uh, Marantz Project D1 to compare them. The thing about the DACs in those days, 20 years ago, is that they were very sensitive to jitter. Now the inputs on this, there are three optical inputs, there are three BNC inputs, and there's one AES XLR input. Now in those cases, because you assumed you need a good transport, you'd have something, as I said, like a CD player. If you plugged it in, say, using a cheap optical cable to something like my iMac sitting behind me, the sound would come out kind of a bit harsh and unpleasant. And that was the, jit the, the effect of jitter on the... Uh, particularly, it seemed to be a, the effect of jitter with Burr-Brown chips. It ten tended to produce a kind of harshness I, didn't particularly, I don't particularly like. So with this good transport, the sound is much, much better than as good as I imagine it could have been with one of those old Marantz transports. But amazingly, to have seven inputs. You'll also see that the input that is not on, the output is muted if there is no lock. If it is locked to an input, you'll see either the 32 kilohertz, which we don't use nowadays, 44.1 CD quality as we know, or 48 kilohertz input is locked. And the thing is, these didn't do high res as there was no high res transports in those days. We didn't have, again, we weren't using computers with 192K, kind of 20 years ago for, for this kind of thing. A lot of music, and which is kind of funny nowadays, when some music comes out online as high res when it was only recorded at a much lower res than it's being put, put sent out as. But there's also an interesting thing, emphasis uh, light here. And you, some CDs had a encoding where there was a, a emphasis on them. I don't know a lot about this, but if there was uh, the emphasis was supposed to be engaged for these, then that light would come on. It's something you can look up, which is not used nowadays. The other interesting thing is there is a peak level meter. So as you're playing music back on this, you'll see that the uh, the lights flash and come up showing the a very approx much approximation of the level. They don't have any numbers or indication by them showing that what the actual level you're listening to, but you can see that music is playing. The interesting thing about this is there's a scaling option here. It scales down from minus 9 dB up to plus 9 dB so that you can adjust the uh, output level to match, say, the volume control in your preamp, ideally. As well, the interesting thing, it has a digital output, so you could actually have it pass through to another DAC or another device, so I could actually pass through the digital output to, to the Yggdrasil. And of course, other than your power button, those were the main features of this thing. There are no other panels or hidden things, although it almost looks like it.
Now, my Yggdrasil is an Analog 2 version with a Generation 5 USB, although I'm using the uh, SPDIF input from the D300 reference at the moment. The Yggdrasil is, of course, designed by Mike Moffat, who is one of the first people to design a separate DAC, separate from a CD player. So, interesting to compare his latest effort with a classic DAC. Now, the interesting thing is both of these are ladder DACs, although this uses a modern industrial chip, Whereas, as I said, the Marantz Project D1 uses a Philips digital to analog converter, which is no longer made. Now, the thing about these old converters is they had a particular sound which was very euphoric and extremely enjoyable to listen with. And I used to have a Parasound DAC 1600. You may have heard some about some of these old DACs. The PCM 1704 UK didn't quite have the reputation of some of the older ones, which may have only been 16-bit, like the analog devices AD 1865, of which uh, a few companies like Audio Note still have collections of and make non-oversampling DACs with because of their reputation in that way. Now the thing is, this is only 16-bit. That doesn't at all prevent it sounding very, very good. What I did notice in listening to an amount of music, and I was only limited to pretty much non-high-res music, which meant either stuff on Tidal or stuff... Uh, I decided not to use Rune or other software to convert down to 16-bit. I decided to use stuff that was already in that format because I didn't want two digital filters being used at once. And then comparing the two, although there may be some variants considering that I can't use quite the same cabling for both, I plug both into Audio GD's Master 9 or Master 10 and listen, say, with these. I've got the Meze Empyrean here at the moment and a number of other headphones, or I've got my speakers, which are out of view, a pair of ELAC FS247s. Still, both were extremely resolving. I didn't go down into listening to super fine details or try and pick out the, the, the finest bit. I didn't notice any great difference in resolution significant enough to really matter. What I did notice is this sense of, in listening, that the Yggdrasil is still very detailed and still presents the music in a, in a, in a very, allows the music to come through very well. But as always, to me, given a slight sense of what I would call dryness to the music, it works very well if you have something like a tube amp to use with it. Now, I think what is magical about the old ladder DACs, given that a, a, one of the modern designs from Audio GD has an extremely low level, well, technically inaudible level, of even order harmonic distortion, is very possibly, and I don't have any measurements of this to back that up, but very possibly these old DACs give a slight sense, they have a slight amount of even order harmonic distortion, probably below the regular audible levels, but maybe it's that particularly, or something to do with the digital filters that give them a sense of euphoria. And euphoria is what I got from this. It, didn't, it wasn't like taking a drug euphoria, but listening, say if I listen with the Yggdrasil, I can still enjoy music, and I still do enjoy music listening with the Yggdrasil, but there was something more when listening with the Project D1 that just made it more magical and made it feel like the music was reaching out to me and expressing something. And that's something I hadn't heard since the old, the old Parasound that I used to own, which also used a R2R DAC in it. And maybe the Yggdrasil doesn't quite have that. Maybe it's just technically more accurate. And this comes down, although this is probably a very technically accurate DAC as well, the old ladder DACs still weren't maybe quite as technically accurate as the modern Sigma Delta ones are. And that comes down to the old classic argument, do you go for the slightly more euphoric and less technically accurate sound, or do you go for the more accurate and uh, more precise sound and lose a little bit of that euphoria? And I think, again, that's why some people like tube amps, because of that slight sense of euphoria, caused by the even order harmonic distortion, although you can design tube amps with a minimum of that and design them to be very accurate as well. I listened to a lot of classical and jazz primarily because I wanted the least, uh, the most unadulterated recordings I could to compare these two, and I often found myself switching back to the Project D1 because it was just such a nice deck to listen with. Very pleasant and very enjoyable, and it's one I'm going to miss immensely. There's something really magical about the sound of these things that just, again, makes you want to listen. Maybe the closest I can come to something similar was uh, IFI's Pro IDSD. That has different digital filters. Their high tap filter, not entirely unlike Chord, gives a kind of more even, uh, more even but maybe slightly flatter presentation, given that it's not quite the uh, level of Chord's one. But still, it's not quite as enjoyable to listen with as their Gibbs Transient Optimized filter, which is slightly le less accurate and slightly more euphoric sounding. So it's interesting comparing both of those. I can't say that uh, the Pro IDSD sounds anything like an old ladder deck. That's another comparison in, in, entirely. But 
there was a little bit of similarity there and it makes me wonder about the details of the digital filter in this and some of the old DACs. And it's a pity that um, they can't make anything like that anymore with those old chips because they're now all gone. What you do see nowadays, of course, like Audio GD, who build their own uh, board-based ladder decks where they, they're using individual resistors and switches and uh, a field programmable gate array. That's the only way you can experience anything like what these things did. So that's the Marantz Project D1. It's going to be sad seeing it go. You know, I almost wish the uh, good old uh, Audio GD R7 was back to replace it, but it looks like it's going to be sticking with uh, Shit Audio's Yggdrasil and this D300 Ref for the time being for my uh, main DAC setup, which is anything that's not connected there. But I've had more stuff coming down the track, so do check that out. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the Marantz Project D1. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you'd like to see more. Also, I have to say thank you to my patrons. The people whose names you see up on screen now have been supporting me for the equivalent of say buying me a coffee or once in a while or some who are more generous buying me the equivalent of dinner once in a while are the people who make these videos happen and again these people get to have already seen this video they get to see it in advance they get to see it without ads and they also get to be part of a little community online where they can ask me questions directly uh, participate in chat and uh, generally we have a very good time in talking about and making these videos so if you'd like to become one of them click on the link in the description. Also, if you'd like to support me, there are also links to Amazon, which you can use to buy stuff as well, and that will help me out too. So thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you online.